Hello, everyone. Welcome to Conscious Living. We are here live at the Specially Produced Network, and I'm here live on Messenger through Facebook on our iPad with Meredith Heronbrook. Welcome, Meredith. Well, thank you, Ashley. Oh, glad my. to be here. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. It's so exciting. I'd love to introduce you for just a minute to everyone. Sure. I know. I think it's so great. <laughs> Meredith is an author of Becoming Ridiculously Awesome. She is a transformational life coach, NLP, master practitioner, soul constellation therapist, kahuna, and intuitive. These tools help her address many layers that shape our experience in every moment. And she is super passionate about helping others achieve their awesomeness <laughs> through <laughs> uncovering what stops them from getting in, in their way that they want in their lives. The more we can update, she says, our world and belief systems and experiences and complete our learning, the more present and fulfilled we can be in our lives and others going forward. Thank you, Meredith. That was such a beautiful way to describe who you are and what you do for the world in this way. I really enjoy working with you and collaborating with you in so many different ways that we support the world around us. And I know specifically this week we wanted to talk about healing with breath. And it's such a unique topic and well-talked about topic. And we wanted to approach it from a, a parent's point of view to support their kids in helping them breathe, center, calm, and come to peace on many levels and layers. And I so appreciate your presence here today and sharing with all of the parents and kids about how to work with breath. Would you share with us just a little bit about your process with supporting people with their breath, even, even moms and dads and little people? Well, thank you, Ashley. Um, one thing I want to really start off with is um, noticing actually what the breath is and what it does for us. I think we take it for granted um, because we just breathe. We are born and breathing automatically. And uh, I think it's important for us to actually take a moment to be able to look at what the breath does for us. It's a physical part of us that um, is regulated by the mammalian part of the brain, the reptilian part of the brain, I should say. And um, it's automatic. And I think we take it for granted sometimes that, well, of course it's there. But when we start to become more aware of that we have breath and we can actually use it to our advantage and not just be... Um, reactive to our breathing, um, that's where I think the power can be held. So let's just take a moment to appreciate that we have breath and that it fills our lungs and it helps our cells and our brain and all parts of us, but it also can help us spiritually and uh, in calming ourselves as well, which is what you and I are ultimately wanting to talk about today is how do we use this? How do we use it as a tool um, to calm ourselves, to ground ourselves, and almost even connect with each other? Um, what I So I'm a parent of two, and um, so I am learning as well uh, in being a parent to keep my children calmer, and in so doing, I have to keep myself calmer. Um, so... The, the first very quick way to really help ourselves and our children is when our children are upset in their right brain, emotional, upset, distraught, stressed, angry, is to acknowledge what their experience is without even saying anything and just breathe with them the pace and the veracity that they're breathing. And then what you can start to do is just say, I know. And then you start to slow your breathing down and you deepen your breathing and you slow it down. And what will happen is very subconsciously 
they will start to mirror you because you're their parent, you're their guide and supporter, and they will naturally want to keep in rhythm with you. And so that is the first thing to do to help support your child when they're in stress. And that's that sense of reactivity that you were talking about. Yes, yes. exactly. Yeah, it's so that very reactivity would be reactive. We, I know. And we don't, I don't think we really experience or notice what it is when we're in reactivity and of any type, what we do with our breath, right? Um, so many children, right, yeah. they'll accelerate their breath. So they'll pant and get all excited and, you know, or, or upset. Um, many times when we're super angry or frustrated or overwhelmed, what do we do with our breath, right? We. We hold it in, right? We cinch, we clench, we grasp, we we retract, right? We do all those things and we hold yeah. our breath and we don't recognize it. And I think we do it a little calmer or more subtly from an adult right. perspective, right? So we'll sit here and hold our breath and we'll keep right. looking and doing and looking and doing. We don't even know we're holding our breath because we're not as maybe yeah. as accentuated as the children might be in the moment of reactivity. Right. And we get caught ourselves of being in a stressful phone call, in a stressful conversation. Yes, like you're saying, Ashley, we hold our breath, we hold it in. And it's so think about or imagine what is actually happening with the body at that time. Without the breath, what happens? Muscle stress, the flow of oxygen and movement of the fluids and everything else is stuck. What else gets stuck? Our brain the function, energy. right? It drops. Our brain too. function. Yeah. Everything just clinches. Yeah. So when the moment we can start to be more aware or mindful and just notice, you'll go, oh, I'm really stressed. Okay. So then regulate your breathing. Once you regulate your breathing and put focus on it, you'll quickly notice Ah, oh, and then you can relax and notice all the parts of you that start to relax a little bit more. And it takes about three seconds to do. And it is so fast. We don't need pills. We don't need all this other stuff. You just need your breath. Absolutely. <laughs> it's the best medicine to start off with, I'll tell you. So let's say you're preschooler in a moment when, when um, she might be getting excited and, and overwhelmed or uh, frustrated mm -hmm. or upset, and you work in that breathing pattern with her to mm -hmm. mirror her or reflect it so that she can mm -hmm. see she's doing it without having to say she's doing it, right? That, that mm -hmm. body language reflection is very helpful for the kids, and they don't feel as mm -hmm. so put upon or judged by you or then them judge themselves. So it, right. it facilitates that, that interaction and that, that nonverbal communication with each other. So, it does. so when you've had that happen, how has she responded? Because I, I bet many people might think, oh, that's not going to work, you know, or something <laughs> like that. So how, how does that function with you and your daughter? Well, um, it works really well. And I will tell you that it takes a little patience and a little bit of training, if you will, or a little mindfulness to really mirror your physical and your facial expression and your breathing. If she's stressed and just and clenched, go get clenched, get stressed, try and copy, copycat what she's doing or he is doing and just be with that for a moment. And what else that does for the parent or the caregiver is you're understanding where they are. You're getting cues on what that feels like. And so when we are trying to mismatch and go, and I'll tell you a funny story, when I said, at least just breathe, just, okay, let's just take a breath and let's calm. So I'm trying to manually shift it. She goes, she looks at me and she says, Mama, I don't want to breathe. <laughs> and I just started laughing. I'm like, oh, I'm trying to force the situation, right? So we as parents need to be a little bit more subtle. This is a beautiful way of doing it is you're mirroring them and you're matching them and you're respect. And what you're doing is you're respecting also where they are. And in that respect of copying, of mirroring, I like that word better, when you're mirroring, you're respecting their space and their experience. And then 
they will, and then you'll, you'll mirror them and then you'll slowly shift and you go and belly breathe, breathe more deeply and calmly without judgment and give all the time, give yourself five minutes or 10 minutes, 10 minutes out of the day, actually to stay connected with your child will serve you better than trying to be on time to something else. Yeah. It's so easy to get caught in that. But when you can just say, I'm just going to spend five minutes here, whatever else happens in the world, I'm going to let it go. But this connection with our child um, and helping them for that moment uh, will serve you wonders. I'm still working on that, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, but we try in every moment as best we can. Absolutely. You know, and, and it's really interesting because you brought up a really great point to, to discern with everyone. So we think, you know, in, in our childhood and when we had friends or parents or people were teasing us, they would mimic us, right, and mm -hmm. copycat mm -hmm. us and do that just to annoy people. So we may have grown up with the idea that if we mirror somebody that's mimicking them or copycatting them or teasing them, but right. actually what you're describing is something very, very different. You're stepping into her experience. You're mm -hmm. feeling her feelings. You're noticing it. You're mirroring mm -hmm. the body language because that also supports you in, in embodying what she's feeling. And when they feel that connection, and you you don't have to do it more, more accentuated with them, maybe even probably a little less than them, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that they can softly see it what mm -hmm. they're doing versus like harshly, like over exaggerating. I tend to right. think us as parents, we could get frustrated and we can, I'm going to show them, <laughs> right? And <laughs> this is what you're doing. <laughs> and so, yes. and so that yes. doesn't really help as much, but I can see if we walk into that situation and choose to mirror it for them so that mm -hmm. it's a softer communication and showing them and illustrating them and then, and then capturing them, and guiding them down to a, a space, and I mean down from that accelerated, overwhelmed situation to a more yes. peaceful or calm state. Especially yes. the younger ones um, will help guide them versus just telling them what to do like you had illustrated that your daughter said. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to yes. breathe, right? Yeah. And, then you right. Can, and then you're in a worse spot because now they're defiant of, about working with you because... Yep. We miss the boat, right? We miss that connection point. Right. And right. so it, so it's okay too, right? We can always say, I'm sorry. I, I didn't really mean that. <laughs> I, I meant it to, to support you and help you. You know, we can, we can say that too. They're going to be like, yeah, sure. You don't understand. Right. But, yes. but you're right. Yeah. When you, when you embody that and you, and you not mimic it and not copy it, but mirror it when you do that. Mm -hmm they really then understand that you understand where they're at and they're yes. going and they're going to be more open to follow your guidance. Mm -hmm. That's, that's and beautiful. If, if I can add Ashley too, is you can try again, you know, it, the first try with my daughter didn't quite work according to plan, but we learn, right. We're learning in every moment and you go, okay. And then you could say, you're right. I understand let's just sit here and then just start to relax yourself and they will unconsciously just start to relax too. Yeah. And, and it's an amazing way to connect with them. I mean, children are nonverbal coming out. They don't speak for the first year and a half. Right. They aren't even right. at four or five years old or even 15 or 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 years old we all have a hard time communicating at one point at another to be heard, to be acknowledged. And so breathing is such a beautiful, quick way of acknowledging while then bringing your own adult resources to the table to help guide them and, and, and bring them along. Exactly. And, and then what you can do is once you get them out of the, um, freak out stress mode and then their their right brain is calming down and then you can talk logic then you can talk about what happened how they felt what was going on and what what they'd like to have happen but that the that left brain's um conversation is for a little bit later or maybe at another time yeah. maybe it's tomorrow you know, when it's, when there's just absolutely no stress. Yeah. When, when we move on to the problem solving or, 
what created that stress right. in the first place. Exactly. That's so beautiful. And, and you know, there's, there's so many ways that we can support breathing. And we were mm-hmm. talking about that as ideas of, of creating healing. So in that first mm-hmm. instance that you suggested and supported everyone in noticing is um, in the moment, having, creating a, a reversing or, or neutralizing or balancing or clearing a, an overwhelming situation in the moment. Mm-hmm. And then we can talk yeah. about using breath in even very deliberate formats with children mm-hmm. or, um, or intentional formats with children to support them mm-hmm. through their healing process. And one way that I wanted to share with people as well today is I talk about healing with colors. And many young mm-hmm. children, even older children, depending upon how they see the world or sense the world or experience the world, But I find that most people sense colors in all different ways. They can sense it through seeing it uh, visually with their eyes, um, in in their mind's eye, in their heart. They can hear it with their ears, like the color, color blue or color yellow. They can hear it. Um... Or experience it or just sometimes the kids say, I just know it. I just know what the color is. Mm -hmm. And the color represents a consciousness. And um, I have a little color therapy chart that I included in as a, and I'll include it on the YouTube video as a PDF link. But then also um, it's on pictures in the comments section of our Facebook live here. And what we talk about is the colors connect us to a consciousness. For example... Um, on our on our front cover of our podcast, we took the indigo little emoticon. And that indigo mm-hmm. represents a consciousness of, I see, I see the bigger picture, right? And so a lot of times that connects us to our unconscious self. And sometimes with the kids, which is really easy, I talk about different areas like what is the stuck energy? So if they say to you, like your daughter was, you know, all upset and all frustrated, you know, and you got her to calm down and you mirrored her and you helped her breathe more deeply, then you could say something more fun and engaging more than even just processing to problem solve, right? We could talk about that and say, Mm -hmm. okay, so what was that stuck color? And Mm -hmm. it looked like you were grabbing your head, you know, and you were mad at your head and you were mad at your hair and you were ready to pull out your hair you know you're so angry what was that stuck color you know and she could say Mm -hmm. well it was purple and so Mm -hmm. what that meant was was the purple or the indigo was a stuck color it means discouraged sorrow or i lost something or i i can't figure it out right i can't see that bigger picture so the that color represents in the stuck energy something that we feel we can't do or it's not Mm -hmm. okay right And so what we can say is, okay, so let's take a moment and breathe. And this is where we can use breath as a healing measure. So -hmm. let's breathe into your head. Let's breathe in that and grab that purple energy, that stuck energy with your breath and blow it out, right? Mm -hmm. And it literally does help translate energetically to relieving that stress or that tension because what she's doing is is grabbing on to the thought awareness without words, just with colors, about how she can't see the answer, right? She can't see mm-hmm. that bigger picture. Mm-hmm. So what she's doing is she's breathing that out, allowing that to leave her body for a moment so that she can see what the opportunity is. And so mm-hmm. as she starts to breathe it out and exhale out that, that purple color, that indigo color, then ask her if you could... If you could imagine or, or see or notice, whichever way they connect to or hear, what color would be the healing energy, right? And she may see, she may say pink. So pink is, you know, or magenta or pink is a really good one on the color chart that connects us to our healing self, right? Our own self-healing. And it helps us relax. So it was actually really kind of perfect, huh? So you as a parent, and you can put these color charts up on your refrigerator if you like and they can connect to it and then you can help them give them the words for what they're thinking or feeling it's pretty it's really cute and it's really the kids are right on with the colors it's amazing and so you can say okay just like a rainbow shines in the sunshine with rain behind it that pink color is in our environment 
So I want you to breathe in with your breath. Breathe in that pink color to your head. And then exhale any extra stuck purple energy that might still be there. Right? And that's an, that's an energy clearing technique. And it's a support for helping them get calm too. And then what you've done as a parent, you've really connected to where they aren't noticing what's happening. So now you might have some simple words or some easy words for them to help connect to at a more opportune time when it's, when it's better to process what's happened. So that's just an example of the color therapy. And I know we were going to talk, and I'd love you to share in how we could support children in meditation or prayer or a moment of creating, um, accessing their inner guidance. What do you do with the kids, even your infant, right? What do you do to support them and helping them connect to that part of them that knows greater than what their, their mind might think? Hmm. That's a pretty big question, actually. <laughs> it is, isn't it? <laughs> um, what, what I will tell you is I think the – well, I'll just give you an example of what I do with my children every day is create as much connection as possible. And when we have enough connection with someone else, um, and just think about it for your own lives, of when you feel connected, what happens with the rest of your world? Your brain starts to calm down, your breathing calms down, your mind is not as engaged, and you're in the moment. Right. And um, and so the, the world kind of falls away. And, and so... What I do with my children before bed is I even imagine um, I actually bring colors into them. I bring in um, whatever color I feel they need, and I kind of let it filter around their bodies while they're sleeping. Yeah. Um, uh, I bring it into their hearts, whatever I feel they might need. Yeah. And sometimes I'll feel that rejection of, nope, that's not it. <laughs> okay, what other color would feel more appropriate? Isn't that and, fun? And, you know, I, I may not know. And, you know, and I might have an idea. But, of course, as any parent will probably imagine is we may have children. They may be in our lives, but we are not in their brains. We are not in necessarily their... Um, their perspective, their, right? They, we are not in their perspective. Yeah. And so I will just offer any color that seems appropriate. And then I will put it in softly and I'll offer it to them. Yeah. And, and I'll let that kind of work throughout the night. And, um, and I find that, um, I notice they sleep better. They sleep more calmly. And wake up more um, refreshed and relaxed. Yes. And even, you know, and you know what, even I'm just thinking about when they are getting dressed for the day, Notice what colors they pick for themselves. Yeah. That might actually offer Absolutely. an insight on what they are actually wanting to bring in mm -hmm. to their world for that day. How can Very they empower so. themselves, right? Yeah. Absolutely. So maybe having that color chart even by the closet for um, for you checking in. Yeah. Hey, what colors are they wanting today? Oh, that's maybe what they're wanting to be reinforced with today and bring in and then you can even use those words throughout the day to kind of um help them along um you know if i will if they want blue if they want indigo so how do we want to see the world today you know just just those little things are Giving very them very those fun. words those cues absolutely yes. yes yes so you can have better conversations when they're older yes um and you can have those deeper conversations so the world can, you can help them be less overwhelmed and, and calmer and more empowered with more tools. Absolutely. So let's say that, you know, your older one, who's a preschooler, um, having her step into the opportunity of, or is she in kindergarten now? She's not in kindergarten yet. This is her second year of preschool. Oh, so, so fabulous. Yes. And it's so, very exciting. You know, in kids those age, um, 
they sit down for art projects and they sit down to color or to draw or to mm -hmm. do different things. And sometimes they can sit down frustrated, right? They can mm -hmm. jump into that moment and, and they're maybe not present or, and, and mm -hmm. when we're frustrated, we're not present because we're frustrated about something from the past or something mm -hmm. that just happened or happened a while ago, or it's their confidence level when they sit down to do it, they may not, may feel un, unable or less confident. And so right. we can actually support them in jumping into the breathing and saying, I can notice that, you know, it might be a little frustrating to sit down and color. Um, what could we do together that would support you in helping you? Mm -hmm. We could take in a deep breath, right? And we can breathe out that sense of overwhelm or frustration. Mm -hmm. And we can actually use words too. And we can say, breathe in that confidence. You're an amazing mm -hmm. color. What's mm. your favorite thing to color, you know, and like a sun or a fish or something like that? And when mm. and then and then it's reengaging them with that through the breath and helping them recognize. And these are the things that we want to discuss together with the parents about how when they start to connect to their breathing patterns and whether they're not breathing or they are breathing or their breathing is stuck, that right. in any moment that they go into and engage in helps them open to deeper understanding, deeper connection with themselves and the, all the others around, including the crayon and the, and the paper, right? Mm -hmm. and, and then their mm -hmm. genius and their, their, their true nature really comes through and flourishes. And that's mm -hmm. what genuinely builds all that confidence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. We love that. Doesn't that just feel wonderful, though? It really when, does. I mean, just when... What I loved what you were doing was when you were creating that scenario of, I know you're frustrated. You breathe out already. And it's just you automatically, oh, I know. They will just, they will pick that up and they will. And what you're doing is not just moving the breath is you are not just moving colors. You're moving energy out of your body Absolutely. so that the body can flow properly. Yes. The body always wants to be in a calm um, beautiful, connected way with itself and the rest of the world. Absolutely. So the more we can do that with them and um, the greater we can have them um, move through and get that stuck energy out. Absolutely. The more we stick onto it, as we know, the more we, we hold in and, and do those things, we can get sick, you know, that, so when we breathe and help that along, the better our immune system is, the better we sleep, the happier we are, the more connected we are. Um, and I think that's what we want for everybody. And we can create that as parents to empower ourselves, give our children that opportunity in more moments um, as we can uh, to help them be more complete in um, being able to handle stressful situations so they aren't quite so stressful in the future. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. we would love everybody to take a moment and just take in a deep breath, take in this understanding, this awareness for ourselves, for others, and an opportunity to share with our children. And just take that moment mm -hmm. to notice when we support them in breathing and connecting and noticing how to shift and shape and support the energy flows in their body, just think about how this is a tool for the rest of their lives and that this tool can grow and expand to all kinds of amazing levels of breathing and healing that open the door for the rest of their lives. I just want to thank you and thank everyone and thank Meredith for joining us today on Conscious Living. Have an amazing day healing with your breath. Bye-bye, everyone. All right. Bye.